this video we'll be going from Rundu to Divundu, stopping at three camps in three days. Probably might not show you Divundu because I do have another video about that. The plan is to spend the first night at Mokuku, the second night at Oka Suito, <laughs> and the final night at Camp Hundurukoro, which is owned by a family member. Now hopefully some decent camping, uh, irrespective of the rainy conditions. <laughs> it's been raining full force for the last two days. I'm quickly going to show you Rundu town as well, because we do need to do a bit of shopping, uh, fill up on fuel, and we'll take it from there. I'll be honest with you, I don't know too much about Rundu. I know that from the main road, from the BH, you can take a road straight down through town, up until this T junction at the bottom, and if you turn right, you go to you're on the road that goes to all the lodges. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Now we are in the main road. Just beware the local taxis. They just... I just stop when they want to. There's a little mall up here. I don't know if we should... I don't know if we should try and stop here. Um, there's a shop right. OK Mart. Hungry Lion. Pip. Uh, still can't go in here. There's an MTC if you're looking for a SIM card. Or airtime. I think there's lots of ATMs, you don't have to worry about it. Ah, oh, there's the entrance. Here's the entrance. Rundu Shopping Mall. Can you see what that guy just did from the other way? He just basically just parked this guy in. Oh my word. Patience. People always... T Why do I laugh so much? Because that's all you can do. That's all you can do. Back from the shop, it's hell of a busy December shopping and it's getting hot. Uh, started out rainy this morning, much better. Let's quickly see what we got. White bread, 13 Namibian dollars. Six rolls, 13 Namibian dollars. Viennas and chips for 17 Namibian, two Viennas and chips for 17 Namibian dollars. A packet of teeth, <laughs> sweeties, 10 Namibian dollars. Uh, six extra large eggs for 23 Namibian dollars 600 ml coke 600 ml coke for 9.99 and then there's two things I want to tell you about shopping in the north specifically keep your toe slip because they check it at the door when you go out security will physically check the items versus what's in your bag and then in Namibia we pay for plastic bags if you ask a bag I think it's one Namibian dollar you can obviously always take your own bags Let's go get some fuel. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get in here. There's another classic SFA. Yo! <laughs> see if we can get in here. Yo! Ah, nice, thanks. Thank you. I know it's busy. Christmas time, everybody's getting money, everybody's coming home. Hello, please can you fill up for me petrol? 95. Done! And if my calculations are correct, Mukuku rest camp should only be like 50, 55 kilometers from here. And then the Vundu itself about 200 kilometers. Should be straight on this road and then when you get the main road to BH you just turn left. Easy as that. There was something else I wanted to tell you about Rundu. I can't remember now. Oh yes, and then Kaisosi Lodge. Um, it was alright. Um, I like that you've got your own little to toilet and shower. A little protected because it, it rained like most of the two days. You have your own little roof when you can sit with your, ta with your little table and your chair where I could work. They do have you have, you've got electricity as well, a place to buy obviously lots of shade and beautiful green lawns. Right on the river. What I didn't like is that you've, you've got your little square and next to you is another square on that side's another square and this side's another. So when it's full and it's busy, you're all gonna be on top of each other. But in general, not a bad place to stay. And that, that seems to be the main road. Yeah, and here's the other engine. This is the engine I remember, the one on the main road. It used to be a wimpy, I used to stop for coffee, but ah, they closed down. And from here it's left, and this will take you to Divundu, Congola, as well as Katima Melilo. Over, no one's to say the only thing that 
nothing escapes my brain is okay, looks like I found it turn off to it's Mukuku Mukuku race camp I found it on the camping in Namibia map if you're wondering where I'm finding all these places should be this one Google Maps obviously bailed on me as soon as it's not tar road but fortunately I've got maps.me and the camping in Namibia map Oh, it's a tar road. <laughs> Remember what I said about D roads? Well, that's a tar road. Wow. Well, this is a tar road. It's not going to be tar road for long. It says Mashare, two kilometers. And I'm assuming that's where the tar road stops. But it's beautiful here. It's so green. This time of the year, it's always raining. I'm worried about the deforestation. Hopefully, the Local authorities got that under control. Everything else looks amazing. We are coming over, no one's to say. The only thing that escapes my brain is you beat slowly. The only way I get to you count the second day when I do. Here's the sign Mukuku Rest Camp 2.4 kilometers. Maps told me is slightly off, so just carry on driving. There is signs on the road, it is clearly marked. What does it say here? Mukuku Crocker something camp. <laughs> anyway, all of these camps on the river are like this you've got the main road, then there's a couple of caves between the mode of bush of this between the main road and the river, and you have to take these little side roads to get to the camps. Now imagine when it starts raining. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the fun starts. That was an easy, beautiful road in. I see what happened is you have to drive around. Some guy put his uh, maze field or something up, fenced it all up, and now you have to drive around that. So that's what confused maps.me. Just take note, look at this beautiful, beautiful little forest that you drive in. Oh, and they're waiting for me already. Super easy check in. They've got four beautiful campsites. Unfortunately, they don't have river views, but it's green lawns, electricity, hot water, place to braai, everything your heart desires. It's so beautiful here. And then they do have chalets. Uh, they've got the river views. Uh, I said it's a thousand for the chalet or 600 if it's, if it's only one person. I don't want to get lost here now. Okay, this is my campsite. I took the one right at the end just to have a bit of privacy. The other problem here is your solar panels. It's just so much shade. The solar panels struggle, struggle to keep your batteries charged. This is what you get from a cuckoo. <laughs> you get to sit right on the Kavanga River. They've got this little walkway down of this deck. You can watch some hippo, some crocs, a lot of bird life. And if you've got time for a little geography lesson, I mean, uh, I can't just drive around and show you things. You need to learn things as well. So you think or you'd imagine that the long border between Namibia and Angola is one straight line with one long river, but it actually isn't. Starting in the west is the Kunene River, which runs from Rokana to the Kunene River mouth westwards out into the ocean. Catchment area is in Angola, from Katwitwi to Divundu, this river, the Kavango River. Um, and then at Divundu, it turns southeast. You'll actually cross, just after Divundu, you'll cross a big bridge that goes over the Kavango River turns uh, southeast and goes into the Okavango Delta. That's where it disappears. That's why you've got those nice area or the Delta around uh, Shikawe, Maun, uh, Moremi, etc, etc. Fun fact about this river is that it runs the wrong direction, the wrong direction. Because usually rivers run from inland to the coast. This one runs in the opposite direction. It actually goes more inland. And at Katima you get the Zambezi, which runs around that little section around to uh, Kazungula, but what I'm trying to get to is that there's three rivers that form the northern border between Angola and Namibia, and I'm fortunate to be spending my Saturday morning next to one of them. We are back on the main road, and it's day two of our three day three camps video. Um, Okakwito is only about 80 kilometers from Kuku, 130 kilometers from Rundu, on our way to Divundu on the B8. I've never been there, I don't know what to expect. So, just like you, uh, we'll find out when we get there. Just a bit more information if you're wondering what you can do in this area of Namibia. One is obviously the river and all activities associated with it. Camping next to the river, fishing, boat cruises, sunset cruises, etc, etc. And then you've got a couple of national parks up here as well. Um, the first of that is Kaudum National Park. 
I showed you the southern entrance in the previous video. I'll show you the northern entrance in this video. Then there's Mbabatwa as well, down the Devinda Road, going to Botswana. And then there's the Modimo, other side of Congola, but I'll show you that in another video. And before we get to Okakwito, there's the Kaurum National Park turn off. There's actually two signs. There's one at about 100 kilometers and then there's one after that. I only know this one, the second one opposite the Katere um, turn off. The one that actually shows you the Kaurum National Park sign, 4x4, only 55 kilometers. I'm just going to go down here. Just to give you an idea and stop at the sign and just give you a bit of information. So I have no idea. The other one, just the first sign just says Kaurum. This one is the one I've used. This is the one I know. And as you turn, there's a big tree and under the tree or just behind the tree is the sign that says, if I remember correctly, Kaurum 45 kilometers and then it starts. I'm not even going to go in there. <laughs> yeah, so that's the sign down there. It's Kaurum 46 kilometers. What I can tell you from here is that it's 46 kilometers of tough sand, driving thick sand. There is a section where there's um, deep, like deep ruts and the locals basically made their own little road ne next to it. So use that one. Um, then you'll get to the gate and then there's another, I think about 17, 20 kilometers of more thick sand until you get to the camp. The north camp is called Kaudum. You pay your park fees at the gate, if I remember correct, correctly, it's cash only, and then you pay your pay your camp fees separately at the camp because it's privately operated. What I also figured out now is that Okakuito is on the opposite side to the one of Kaudum. Okay, so that helps. <laughs> There's no sign for it. It's only a sign for Shamvura, but we're not going to Shamvura, we're going to Okakuito as per the camping in the Namibia map. Katere, three kilometers. Here comes the gravel. According to the Eye of Melinda app, it's just a random little turn off, there's no sign. And this road should take me directly to Okakuito. Let's hope so, let's see. <laughs> I'm just loving exploring. This is what this is what I like, or this is what, what my channel is, or this is what I am as a traveler, is exploring like this. This looks like a little school on the left hand side. Is that it, yeah? There's a building here. Yeah? The gate should be that but I'm just gonna go down anyway oh yeah it's a black brick paved road down to the river I'm assuming it's the camp here next to me I think I missed the camp oh yeah there's a river I'm gonna drive into the river I'm just gonna go left here that's the river around there yeah here's this ah here you go must be this one yes sir how are you fine man this is Okakuito I can camp here it's all right. Did you get, did you get a book? No, I didn't book. I get a book. Can I? Is it my friend? No, no, it's nice. Yeah, nice. Can I get nice on it, Belny? Sometimes just arriving throws people off a bit. But just a couple of phone calls. Fortunately, the number is on the back of the camping Namibia map or the camping in Namibia map. So I just gave them a call, and I got campsite number six. Apparently, I got fridges and stuff. Sounds like quite a fancy place. Let's go have a look. Swimming pool. Oh, they're right on the river. It's beautiful. How, how on the river do you want to be? Wow. I haven't done this in ages where I just walk through a campsite because usually, you know, it's just another campsite. But how amazingly beautiful is this? Look at this. This is the Kavango River. This is my campsite. Look at this view. <laughs> How beautiful is this? I think it's a little bit more than usual. I think this is about 180. Look what you get. You get, look at this fridge. This is like a little self catering chalet. <laughs> we are back on the main road for our final camp camp Hindurukoro in our three camps in three days video um, I haven't even checked how far it is I think it's about 40 kilometers from uh, Okakuito I know it's on this road I know there's a big sign that tells me to turn off I also know that it's 50 kilometers from Divundu so if you're coming from that side in this video that will be the closest camp to Divundu so it's a it's a good option 
yeah, let me just get there, let me show you what to expect, and let's end this video. Turn left, oh, yeah, no, it's clearly marked. Even at the main road, like I said, there's a very big sign telling you to turn left if you're coming from Rundu. You really can't miss it, and then you get to T Junction, you turn right, and there's one, two, three signs uh, showing you the way, so you really can't get lost. And like I said, like I've told you, all of them have these little access roads, which, uh, yeah, during the season, well, it's season now, rainy season, I mean to check or confirm the lodge that uh, you can actually access them this lodge is owned by a family member so I'm probably just gonna park set up camp show you the lodge and then just spend some time with family as you can see it's clearly marked all the way and you enter through the gate if you're wondering why they have these gates it's mainly just to keep cattle out cat cattle and goats because they'll just destroy their camps I actually told them I'd be arriving a few days earlier so hopefully um, I'll still receive a warm welcome <laughs> There's no one to, no one waiting for me at the door. <laughs> All checked in. Well, <laughs> I didn't check in. I was scolded for arriving a couple of days late, <laughs> and then I was told to just take that spot. But I've got all their chalets. They've got these little family units as well, and then the campsites are next to it. They're all river views. Very beautiful. It's changed the bit since I've been here a couple of months. I've changed a lot. It's actually quite busy at the moment, expanding. Expecting people today, a large group today. So yeah, river view tents, and then it's the campsites right at the end. I don't want to get lost like I always do. So it's three here. Camping. Camp yeah, that's mine. Yeah, that's a campsite right here. Has the ablutions on the left? Beautiful. Clean. He said I can use this one for the night. Yeah, number three. That's where I'll set up. Look at this view. <laughs> Look at this view. <laughs> Campsites, as I promised, right on the Kavanga River. And except for everything else, except for the lots of shade, the green grass, the braai, the electricity, the light, etc., etc., they also give you free firewood, which a lot of places no longer do. And then you've got all the chalets next door, all river viewing. You've got the self catering kitchen, which is another bonus, i.e., you can go and cook your own meals using their kitchen. Long time as well as frequent travelers will immediately understand the benefit of that. Then there's a the swimming pool, the beautiful deck, as well as the very affordable fishing. I'll put the contact details for Leon, the owner, in the description below and you can just contact him directly and discuss all of that with him. I showed you everything I promised. If I didn't, questions in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was useful. If it was, please like and subscribe. Please consider joining my Patreon for only five US dollars per month.